Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Dave, CTO at DVS, and today we're going to look at the thermal imaging design tool by Hike Vision. So it's going to make your life very, very easy, hopefully, moving forward and get you into using more thermal imaging products. So first thing we want to do is subscribe by pressing this link here, this icon here, and then the bell, which should come on the screen there, will tell you when new content goes live. Make sure you do subscribe so you can automatically be notified when these things go live keep commenting liking sharing etc etc um it's really really taking off at the moment and uh, we're getting lots of good feedback and support that's what we're here to do uh, support you guys so today let's move on let's crack if you look in the uh, actual post today you should see the link along the bottom where you can download the thermal design tool simply download it install it and you'll get the icon as such on your screen so we're going to open the software by clicking in the right place to start with. And let's move this over here and we'll open that up. So you, first thing you'll see is the design tool is open, but it's blank. We need to put a, a floor map, um, you know, a site plan in. So what we're gonna do is add a plan up on the top left hand corner here. You can import project map, then you can set the scale, then you can draw a line, you can move or you can add object. So what we'll do is import a project map. Uh, let me go and find one with measurements on there. So what I do normally is open up Google Maps. This is the easiest way of doing it if you've never done this before. Let's do our office. Map. You will change it to satellite view. No, I don't want the Chrome. Use Chrome. Thank you very much. So this is a satellite view of our office here. And what we can do now is if we let that sort itself out, we can do a measurement on here. We right click in, measure distance. And we'll go from there. To there. So that's about 52 meters. And then what we can do is screenshot this now. So if we take a screenshot, I use the snipping tool. You can use whatever you want. Save as desktop uh, DVS office. Close that down. So now we can import project map, desktop, look for our map, DVS office, import that. And the first thing it says is please set the scale. So if I drag this into sort of the middle of the image there, you've got a couple of options at the top here. You've got set scale. So select set scale, press and hold the left mouse key button and drag the line there across to where you know it's measured and it's 52 meters, press OK, and now it's scaled the image. So when we add cameras to it, it's using the correct scale. That is very important, or it's not gonna actually represent what you're trying to view at all. Oh, pardon me. Next we can do is select the camera. So we can go select camera, um, we can only do thermal imaging products. This is the thermal imaging design tool. We've got lots of different products within here. So you find the relevant product. So you've got like all the different types of PTZs and bullets, long range. So let's say a 2166, this is the high res seven mil. So we'll select that. So now I've selected it and then we'll click on add camera. So you've got a couple of options. You're mounting height, so we're gonna mount it about five meters high. You're mounting angle and you're panning direction. And then you've got down there the smart parameters. What are you going to use the product for? So you've got the Hike VCA. So the suggested human size is 0.5 by 1.8. So 1.8 meters tall by 0.5 meters wide. You can adjust the parameters there. Then you can set it for temperature measurement, fire detection, or customized. So the VCA behavior. So we'll leave it as default for, default for the VCA detection. So line crossing, intrusion detection, etc. So we'll click on add. We then simply drag our camera into the mounting position where we want. Turn this little nodule here and you can see it is 
you can zoom out a very wide angle camera so i chose the seven mil we can adjust the mountain height whatever that needs to be we'll leave it at five and then you've got your mountain angle you'll see as we start to reduce the angle the detection you can see the detection mountain with it so depending on your mountain angle will affect the detection distance obviously let's bring that right back up to get the maximum we can about 37 degrees you've almost got no dead zone in that and quite you know we've covered virtually the whole car park with that so that's brilliant um then you can um so if i what you can do is change the color of the vca so if you don't like that color just choose another one under here uh, you know whatever color suits your background i uh, quite like the green and you can change the B, uh, the behavior analysis so we could say the target width is actually uh smaller a lot smaller and it will adjust the detection area accordingly so depending on the object detection size will affect the VCA read area, but it might easily represent what it will and won't catch. So we'll put it back to default, 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. And then once you have made that, you can obviously adjust the mountain angle as well. It tells you there under this parameters what the maximum distance of detection is, 61 meters. So from here, that is the maximum edge air, 61 meters. So it's a very nice indicator of what you can detect within this area, the maximum distance. So if I change it to temperature measurement, uh, the maximum distance is 74, but that's based on a one meter by one meter object. If I do it via fire detection, you can see this camera doesn't have fire detection. It's not the T model. The T model is the one we recommend for accurate fire detection, although the non-T model does have fire detection. It's uh, plus or minus eight degrees. The T model is plus or minus two degrees accuracy. So that's the one you should really be looking at. Um, but you can, if you adjust the fire detection, say to like 1.5 or 1.6 even, you'll see that start to see the area that you can get with fire detection. And again, if you don't like that color, simply change it. What we are going to do is put it back to the height VCA because that's the one we're interested in, line crossing and VCA. So what I would normally say is one camera looks like we've covered there. We have got a bit of a blind spot there and I could pan the camera around. But what we could also do is say, okay, add a second camera. We'll move that into this corner and we'll pan this round. Now I can't see the... What you can do is just use this. I can't see the little turny nodule. My eyes are not too good. I should wear glasses like my doctor suggested. Or optician. We'll move this round and we're going to get full coverage that way. So that's pretty much what I have got in my car park. I've got two thermal imaging cameras overlapping each other. So I've got a camera looking at the, the you know, my boundary this way and the camera looking at my boundary and gate this way. If anyone comes into my car park area, um, we are well protected, the same on the sides and the back. Um, so I do use two thermal cameras. Again, I can select uh, any of my two cameras on the left hand side there. I can select metric and imperial. What I can also do is if I like to drag in uh, a human or a car so i could say what does a human represent if i put them there so you've got a human there and you can move them around you can start to see as you move closer and further away from the camera if a human is there it's that side this is a preview if i add a car again the car will be bigger compared to a human of course and if I select that camera there and do the same, so just let you add things as references and it tells you there as you move a vehicle round, it tells you the pixels. If you look at the bottom right hand corner, the further or closer you come, it actually tells you the pixel on target so you get a much better idea of what that object um, will look like actually in the detection zone. So it lets you build it really nicely. What we can do then, when we finish, we've designed our system. We're really happy with it. Um, click on preview then. It tells us what cameras are in here, you know, uh, mounting angles, etc. We can firstly save the report. So we'll put it on the desktop and save it as a DVS office design. 
and we'll save that. That's a, saved as a design tool format. What you really want to do then is um, say, export the report to send it to a customer. Export it, so give it project name, so we'll give it DVS Office Design. Oh, help if I could spell. Project Designer Dave Davis. Select logo file. If you don't select the logo, the height vision one will be displayed by default. But let's have a look and we'll change it. Let's just put a DVS one in there. I could put a picture of me in there if I really wanted. Let's have a look. It's a very, that's a small file, so it's going to be very stretched. But that's probably the one I'm going to have to go with. Yeah, okay, select that, open that, that's fine. Then we select that, we select the report, so desktop, this is going to export as a PDF. So we'll click save on that, it's exported, I can close that, close this down, yes. Now the report is here, there's a PDF. So it tells me when it was designed, the name of the project, etc. There's the site layout. And there's each camera, so it tells you the model number, the resolution, focal length, tells you everything that you need to know that you put in there, and your complete camera list. So this is the first edition, so far I let you, you know, put cameras on there and work out whether that camera will do the job you require, or whether you actually need more than that. So hopefully you can start using it, as I said, download it from our, um, the link that we'll put up on social media, um, if not, ask us here. If you've got any questions about the thermal design tool, Give our guys here at DVS a call. Give us, you know, drop me an email, drop us a message, whatever you like. Hopefully, you'll find this a benefit. I say, join us next week for some more how to videos and we can learn a lot more. Thanks for all your support, all your help, and I'll see you all soon. Have a good day.